Cape Elizabeth School Board meeting for Tuesday, March 13th, the year 2001. And the first item on our agenda is the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance Moving on with the agenda, adjustments to this evening's agenda. None that I have. None. Um, approval of the January school board minutes, which were in the packet. Any adjustments? Otherwise, we'll. I think it should say February. I'm sorry. This is March. It's my mistake. That's it's what it says on the <laughs> agenda, but I think it's. I'm very good at reading and not processing, Mary, so thank you for it. Um, so does it say February on the? No, no, that's the, yes, only, okay. it's the only place that I made the mistake. Okay. I'm sorry. Um, any adjustments other than, than that? Uh, we'll move on now to comments uh, from our high school representatives. This month's month has been a fairly busy one. Um, winter sports came to a close about a week and a half ago, and spring sports will begin um, starting the week of March 26th. Um, on the SAC, we've, the curriculum subcommittee has been working to develop a survey to pass out to all students to ask them questions regarding um, possible curriculum cha changes, not for next year, but maybe two or three years down the road, and they've, we've also um, declared March um, a month for volunteering, and we're working to set up um, possible um, things to do with various organizations in terms of volunteering, because that's something we haven't done a lot of, and we want to make sure we get um, to do some of that. Um, seniors have been working on their STPs, and proposals have been turned in for the most part, and now they're being looked over by the committee, and we're waiting to hear back on whether they're approved or not. Um, we also recently had the National French and Spanish exams, and um, many students participated in both of those. And students also recently participated in the um, AHSME National Math Exam. Um, our prom is coming up April 27th, and many students are getting very excited about that. We're having a prom fashion show on April 6th, so that's kind of exciting too. Uh, we recently had a Mardi Gras dance that the juniors put on in order to make money for the prom, and that was fairly su successful, and it was a lot of fun. Um, juniors also recently finished the MEAs today, and those seemed to go fairly well. <laughs> uh, there will be a film festival on April 18th for all grades to participate in. Um, the one Act play, were last weekend, and they are going to States in Rockland on the 23rd and 24th. And also, the play Alice was just finished, and it was a great show. You all saw it. Isn't there one more I think production? One no. more production. On yeah. other, other questions for our high school reps? Thank you very much. Good job. We'll now hear from our middle school representatives. Tonight, I'll be talking about the fifth and sixth grade. They'll be having a social on March 23rd, and the student council will be hosting it. Uh, the theme of it will be like a carnival, so that um, they'll have to pay maybe a penny for each thing they do, and they'll get tickets, and they'll pass in uh, their tickets for prizes. And uh, today, the, the fifth and sixth grade had an assembly for the magazine drive that will raise money for Chwanki and other field trips. And there on April 11th, there will be a meeting for Chwanki for the parents. And that's all. 
In the seventh and eighth grade um, this past month, there also has also been a lot going on. Um, I wrote, I wrote the whole school. Um, we also just finished MEAs, and um, boys basketball has just ended. However, swimming and track will continue throughout the rest of March. The Music Man will begin showings on April 4th, 5th, and 6th. Tickets are on sale now at the main office. Report cards will be sent out on Tuesday of next week, and 8th graders will also receive their course recommendations for high school, so we're all getting a little nervous. And uh, family conferences will begin on March 28th. Um, the 7th graders were all also participated in the assembly today for the magazine drive, but 8th graders will get a presentation by the student council on Thursday. Um, high schoolers will talk to 8th graders on March 19th about the high school. They'll come over during advisory, and I'm not sure if it's just for one session, or maybe a few, and answer questions that the 8th graders have about high school. And for the band and chorus, there will be a concert this Monday. Also, the jazz band will be going to the high school for a jazz and um, for a jazz night in early April. And lastly, the band is planning a trip to Augusta on March 21st. So. Great. Any questions or comments for our middle school reps? Good job. Thank you. Uh, we're going to move on to communications. Tom? Uh, you have a, just unfortunately, have a copy of a letter of resignation uh, from Pete Dawson. I guess this makes it official once it comes to this level, but. Um, it has to be accepted by the board. <laughs> oh. So you can always vote, and we can right. tie them up, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, in, in the rest of the report, we'll talk about the process, but it's, um, uh, appreciate the, the remarks, Pete, in, in the letter, and um, we are certainly going to miss you. And good luck. Okay. Here, here. And we will have an opportunity to, um, to tell tales about Pete and do all that kind of good stuff. There's a roast plan. Soon. Pardon me? There's a roast plan. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm going to move on to comments from the public. Um, recognition. Just daily recognition, nothing special. Um, superintendent's report then. Um, the first item we have uh, with us, Sonia Medina, who, if you remember, w did uh, take an extended leave and is here to uh, give us some feedback on, on what she was able to do. Good evening. Um, I teach French and Spanish at the high school. I was born and raised in France uh, from parents who are from Spain. I've been in the U.S. for six years. And uh, I wanted to thank you again for giving me this opportunity to extend uh, my leave when I went to Spain. It was a very rewarding, uh, enriching, and even emotional moment to be able to interview survivors of the Spanish Civil War. I was able to interview uh, five different persons and a total of uh, eight hours of interviews. One was a professor who fought for the Republicans while his brother was fighting for the Nationalists which was a very interesting and also, I would say again, emotional moment for him to um, testify about uh, him being on the opposite side. Um, I also interview a farmer who started fighting for the Republicans and turned himself to the nationalist so he would not die of hunger. Um, the very interesting part of, it, of this man is he brought his memory, which consisted of a huge, enormous book coming, I mean, going from uh, his birth up until nowadays with precious um, pictures uh, from the Spanish Civil War. Um, I've, we had some display at the high school, which I will speak uh, later about that. And also letters that he wrote to his parents when he was fighting in the front. Uh, I was able to take some pictures and I have also um, my uncle involved over there who's trying to make a copy of the section that is only on the Spanish Civil War. I think it would be a precious document for us to have uh, in, at the library at the high school. I also interview uh, my great uncle, who uh, was 10 uh, when the Civil War uh, started, 
and he had to work and pick uh, oranges in order to feed his family because his father had to go to fight uh, in the front. I um, had also the honor to uh, interview my great aunt who um, saw her father, my great grandfather, being arrested by the Franco police to be later um, executed. And, al and also other very emotional moments. Um, I interview also another person uh, who was a young girl when the uh, Spanish war started and she um, told me about how she had to keep moving from one house to uh, the other house uh, in order to flee from the Franco police. So all those testimony are very rich for me to be able to share with students, um, to work with that material in class and to be able to use those knowledge to teach uh, the Spanish Civil War. Uh, in addition to the interview, I gathered many material. A book on uh, Franco, who was the chief of the army during the Civil War and later became the dictator of Spain from 1939 until 1975. I um, got a book on photographs taken by Robert Capa, who was the official photographer of the Spanish Civil War. Two other books on general information about the Spanish Civil War. I got also a documentary, four movies, um, I have also <coughs> recently my students from the Spanish sixth class uh, made, who made a remarkable display uh, that you can see and you're welcome to come at the library on the Spanish Civil War. Uh, if you um, want to come, I would love to be able to schedule a time so they could help you and walk uh, you through the, uh, this display. And uh, I've been also invited um, to two American history classes taught by Mr. Jordan to talk about the Spanish Civil War, the men and women that I interviewed, and also about uh, the impact of fascism in Spain uh, in the, the 1930s. In addition to um, all this material on the Spanish Civil War, I couldn't help but try to gather more information for my Spanish Four curriculum. I took over 80 pictures of Madrid and uh, also on Moorish art in Seville. I got more books on Muslim, Jewish, and Christian in Spain during the medieval and got also 40 slides uh, of Seville, um, the uh, Moorish art, Muslim life, and also the Jewish um, condition during uh, the medieval is also part of the uh, Spanish 4-1 curriculum. Um, I am, I'm thrilled by uh, all the information I've gathered. I believe and strongly believe it enhanced my curriculum. It generated even more interest uh, from the student part and I think gave a new dimension to my teaching by bringing more uh, lively um, a piece of knowledge. So I'm, I thank you very much for this. Any question? Questions or comments? Sounds fascinating. One. <laughs> mm -hmm. Thank you. It's terrific. Thank you for uh, sharing with us. Thank you. As far as uh, an update on uh, future direction action teams, um, we are in the, the final stages of developing the, the action plans, uh, a parent forum was held um, last evening. Um, there will be one session with uh, the district leadership uh, team for, for one last bit of input. Uh, the plans will be finalized and then um, brought to the future direction planning team uh, prior to coming to the school board at the end of the school year. But it's moving ahead quite nicely and the plans are, are pretty much in place right now. Okay, we're going to move on to the principal's reports, and we'll start with Tom on Cove. Good evening. I wanted to start by thanking you school board members and town council members and other people in the community who took the time to come to Pond Cove and share your favorite Dr. Seuss books a couple of weeks ago. Uh, it's one of those activities I think this helps not just uh, with the academic side, but it's good for the school climate. The, the planning behind that was done by uh, teachers, a librarian, and our um, K-12 through volunteer coordinator, Gail Schmader. It was done quietly and behind the scenes, but if you participated, you know that it was extremely well organized, very pleasant for everybody. So thanks very much for that. It helps March be a little more, a little brighter than otherwise. As you know, tomorrow is one of our um, shortened days again, and I thought I'd give you a little preview of the, the activities that we're planning for tomorrow. We've reached a point in our cycle of professional development this year where we're looking more inward than outward. I think from previous reports you know that uh, 
as a staff and by grade level. We've been doing research. We've had ac outside experts come in and help us with our approach to teaching reading and writing. And it, now it's time for us to take that rather abstract knowledge and see if we can apply it to the grittier part of uh, the inside knowledge of uh, changing our instruction and uh, our assessment techniques. One of the ways we're going to do this is um, by taking advantage of the resources we have at school. Um, librarian Shari Robinson, at the request of our literacy planning team, did what amounted to Library 101 for the teachers last week at our faculty meeting. We know we need books. We know we have to carefully gauge the level of the books for groups and individuals, K through four. Um, and what Shari did was help us help us access the library resources in a little more responsible way, including finding sources for us to keep up on the latest release, on latest reviews and releases of books. And it was just a, a good time for everybody. Um, so grades three and four will be, be pursuing the leveling of textbooks tomorrow in more detail by, by um, looking at their classroom collections and organizing that in a, in a way that make those books accessible to kids. Grades K through one, through the efforts of our three reading recovery teachers, are going to go to Westbrook Elementary School to take advantage of what the reading recovery teachers call behind the glass opportunity. We're gonna have real life children being instructed in guided reading by a reading recovery teacher while our first grade teachers and kindergarten teachers observe the lesson from behind the glass, take notes, have their own thoughts about it. Then at the end of that day, they'll be able to share their responses and, and analyze what they saw. I think this is a great opportunity for, for Pond Cove teachers and uh, I congratulate their reading recovery teachers for sharing that knowledge. And finally, an ongoing activity which um, has served our needs really well. Third grade teacher Ren Wilkinson has taken it upon himself to organize an optional study group around a kind of a friendly text about teaching reading grades uh, three through six, although it has some uh, application in grade two. So today, for example, Ren had, the, Ren had given the assignment and teachers came prepared to talk not just about the reading but about techniques they had tried in the classroom and they were able to compare notes about those activities. I think those are really healthy indicators for a school that's trying to create a community of learners. And you know, my political pitch is the uh, shortened days have really helped a lot this year with that. Um, another update and a few more committee meetings. Our climate committee has met little less often this year because we had so many irons in the fire. But we finally got around to looking at the results of the survey we did of staff members, third and fourth graders, and parents last year. And without giving you all the details, um, we're really, I think we're on the right track and focusing on two main themes. The idea of respect came up, which, and I think it's up to us to define more clearly what that means and what everybody's responsibilities are all over the school and at home. And the other really common theme was communication. And any committee I've ever been on which tries to relate to the organization as a whole, we usually underestimate communication by a factor of 10 to 100. So we'll be thinking of ways to improve communication uh, within the Pond Cove communi uh, community. Also during the year, we um, curriculum efforts are still going on. The social studies, uh, we're, we're plugging gaps and matching learning results through granting um, teachers some release time and paying stipends. And we're surely, slowly but surely coming along that way. And I, I brought along a prop to tonight because the, the the K through 12 Science Committee, which has been meeting for years now, plugging away, now has access to the revised standards for curriculum content and skills uh, nationwide. And interestingly, the, the techniques mentioned here as, as being the exemplary ones are the ones the K through 12 Committee has been trying to do for such a long time. So they've latched on to this, and I think we're, we're going to see some further good work from that Science Committee. Uh, particularly uh, in the context of our commitment to professional development. They've done a really nice job. One other little piece which has helped with um, social studies throughout the year is a parent, Kira Wagoda, who has a fourth grade child, got sort of drafted into helping with a, a bulletin board out by the fourth grade wing, which has a famous mainer there every couple of weeks. And clues are put up on the bulletin board, a few more are revealed each day. And they've gotten harder and harder. We started with E.B. White, then we got to some other people. This, this week, 
there was a famous Mainer up there who just returned from a trip to Washington and happens to be a fourth grade teacher. Ingrid Stressinger was in Washington last week for her presidential award. And when she came back and saw that, well, the kids were busy, so I think I know who that is. There was a brief bio of Ingrid up on the board, and she said she was really touched with that. I have to say uh, she deserves all the credit for doing that. So that's the Pond Grove report. Very good. Questions or comments for Tom? Thank you very much. Yep. We'll move on to high school. Pete. As uh, Sarah mentioned, uh, this has been a, a stretch of many, many uh, tests uh, of, of various types. And I'm sure that what she meant uh, when she said that the MEAs didn't go too well is that they didn't enjoy them. Uh, I, I think that uh, the, the class probably performed uh, in a way that's uh, representative of their many talents. But it is, uh, the, the spring testing is a longer battery and uh, it uh, took, we, we did it in three days uh, this year of approximately an hour and a half uh, per day. So I think it is fair to say that today uh, when uh, students finished their last math problems, they were ready to put the MEAs aside uh, uh, for uh, their last time. The uh, other things that are keeping us uh, busy are, this is the time that we go through pre-registration. Uh, students are turning in their course selection sheets uh, for uh, next year, uh, tomorrow. And then we will, the current high school students uh, are tomorrow. The, the incoming ninth grade has more time. Uh, they will be receiving uh, their materials shortly. The, um, Appeals process will start in earnest a week from uh, Friday. Uh, that process is a process by which we look at uh, requests by students and or parents to uh, review the recommendations that were made for their son or daughter or for themselves. I found that that process is a very healthy one over the past three years. Uh, it's a process by which we do allow students to stretch and, and challenge themselves uh, if they uh, choose to, but at the same time give them the best advice that they can. So I think good decisions are made as a result of that process. Our topics for tomorrow will be a uh, combination in the early release uh, uh, period. Uh, we will have some departmental time and, and uh, most of the departments will be spending a good amount of time starting to review uh, the original placements and some of the early uh, appeals requests that, uh, that we've had, making sure that their process is in order. Um, and then we will take uh, some time, probably about one half hour, preparing for the second roundtable discussion uh, of this year, which will take place on Thursday. And I think, as I mentioned to you last month, one of the uh, requests that student leaders and student facilitators made as a result of the first roundtable discussion is that they would very much uh, like faculty members to be uh, active participants in the roundtable discussions as opposed to, in the, in the first set, we had the faculty members acting uh, uh, a little bit more as uh, note takers uh, uh, and uh, the, the students said they would really enjoy, enjoy having the full participation of the faculty members. So Belinda Snell and Katie Lisa will be working with the faculty for about a half an hour uh, during the uh, in-service time tomorrow to just prepare them for their role in the, uh, uh, in the roundtable discussions. The training for uh, the expansion of student leadership is going on extremely well. Uh, we will be at 120 students trained uh, by the end of this year and then replacing the seniors quickly. Uh, it, it looks very good to me. I think we've, this is the, the progress that we made this year was uh, what we had hoped for. Uh, we thought it was going to happen a little bit more quickly and thought it would have, be this way last year, but I think it's really paid off this year. Um, both Kirsten and, and Sarah uh, alluded to the success of, uh, of some of the winter seasons, and, and I'd, I'd like to just mention that again. I, uh, the athletic teams that, uh, that participated this, uh, this winter um, had varying degrees of success in the win-loss column, uh, very wide range. But um, every single one of the teams that, uh, had, that I had the opportunity to watch at various times uh, had great seasons. They, uh, they built 
uh, they, they really built camaraderie, uh, ability to function under pressure, uh, closeness as a group. Uh, it, it was wonderful to watch, and, and uh, without exception, they had fine seasons. And artistically, uh, athletically, I think we tend to uh, uh, be able to keep track because there is fairly good coverage. But uh, I think artistically, it, it's important to highlight the successes that we uh, have already enjoyed and probably will uh, continue to enjoy in the coming weeks. Um, I think most of you are aware that uh, our jazz bands went to the Berkeley College uh, High School Jazz Festival again, uh, and this year came back with uh, what can only be described as a sweep, I think. Um, our large ensemble uh, won uh, in our classification, for the small school classification took first place. Um, Again, we're able to perform in front of uh, a couple of thousand people in the auditorium uh, that night. Uh, it, was, it was wonderful to watch. The students uh, played so well and carried themselves with such pride. It was really fun. The small combo took first place in the combo uh, division. And one of our musicians, Chris Gagne, was selected as the outstanding musician, the outstanding single musician in the festival. Um, I don't know what else they could have uh, done down there. They, they couldn't have done, performed uh, better in any way. And so congratulations are due to all of them and, and uh, of course, especially to Norm Richardson, I think. The One Act Play uh, Festival was selected as one of the finalists at this past weekend's uh, festival in Westbrook. They will go to Rockland in two weeks to perform in the state uh, festival. Again, a wonderful performance, high energy, great deal of expertise. Uh, while being selected as finalists, they were also selected for three different judges' commendation awards. Uh, the award for commendation award for costumes, commendation award for overall technical excellence, and, combination, and uh, judges' commendation for uh, entire acting ensemble. So uh, basically, the, the judges, when they were um, uh, selecting the all-festival cast, uh, felt that it was impossible to single out uh, a performer or two from the uh, Cape cast. So what they did in the award ceremony was invite the entire Cape cast onto the stage uh, in recognition of the outstanding performance that they had put on. Um, so I, again, I, I think we uh, are very fortunate throughout the year. There was a recent comment made, I think about a month and a half ago, in the newspaper, and it had to do with a, um, uh, a very well-recognized and, and outstanding coach uh, of a, one of the schools in the area who was moving on to the college level. And a former player of his uh, mentioned that um, he always thought that this particular coach was too good to be coaching in high school. And I know what that former player meant, I think, anyways. I, I think I know what he meant. I, I suspect that he meant that he had knowledge of uh, the strategies of the game, the, the building of skills that would allow him to succeed uh, at, uh, uh, at higher levels uh, of play. But I know when I read it, uh, my reaction right away was, wait a minute, there is no, no such, there, there is nobody that is too good to be a high school coach. Uh, and I think we have tremendous coaches, directors, conductors, um, and and um, that, that particular article made me stop and think about it once again, that uh, uh, if, if there were people that were too good to be high school coaches, then we probably have a bunch of them, but I don't think that's, uh, uh, I don't think that's the case. I think they uh, are all doing our kids tremendous service. Keith Weatherby has put together a tremendous coaching staff and then works with them uh, to make sure that the values of the school system are uh, part of their experience uh, on the athletic fields and courts, uh, and then uh, others in the non-athletic fields do the same. And I'm very proud of them, and uh, every time that I watch them, I'm, I, I'm, I'm proud. Uh, I think that's it. Okay, any questions or comments for Pete? Thank you very much. And then. I just knew you were going to ask me next, right? Yes. <laughs> Nancy. I kind of figured it out. Pon Coke over here. He's school, so quick study. Um, first of all, I just want to share with you, Mary passed out for me an update from Jill Bell um, that 
We meant to have that in your packet. Jill and I were going to meet last week. She was bringing it. It was one of the snow days. Uh, we met yesterday, so I just um, gave that to Mary this evening. But it's an update of Jill's um, sabbatical and the things that she's been working on. And I will say that um, Jill and I throughout the year have met on a monthly basis because it's her evaluation year, so we're using that um, as a way to do that and just this tremendous time to chat about professional growth and development with her. And she's having such great fun and is one of those learners who's so enthusiastic about what she's doing. And when I'm talking with her, I know I understand what ATMs are, what the ISDN line will do, and what gateways are. But now, my last meeting with Jill was yesterday at about 12.30, so my understanding of all of that has just evaporated a bit. So um, if you have any questions about her technical information in there, I suggest you refer them to my colleague, Gary Lenoy, and he will be able to clear all of them up for you. Um, but I know Jill and I have talked many times the attached part about all the places that you can connect to for video conferencing. She's really looking forward to getting into her classes next year and working on things. And as she's moving to the latter part of her sabbatical, she's now really going to be focusing some actual things that she might be able to do in her science classes next year. Um, so it's very exciting. And I know she will in person next year, but thank you very much for the opportunity. Um, to take this time to further her education about all of that. Um, also, congratulations to one of our students, Alex Koch. Alex is one of our sixth grade students, and recently she qualified for the State Geography Bee. We participate in the Geography Bee every year, but our students don't always qualify for the state um, level. I think the last time one of our students did that was about 10 years ago. So Alex will go on April 6th and participate um, in Augusta. Um, at the Geography Bee, so that's very exciting. And just coincidentally for the Koch family, her oldest sister Chelsea was the winner of our Spelling Bee this year, so um, they've had a very successful February um, season in the middle school and very strong representatives for us in those activities. Tomorrow we will be continuing our assessment work. I won't go into great detail about that tonight because at our last meeting that's what I highlighted for you, um, but people will be continuing to work on those projects in their groups. Tomorrow evening, we have an information night about our accelerated programs um, for any families in the middle school. The, high, the target audience tomorrow night are incoming fifth grade families, um, but families from any of the middle school students who are considering um, having their sons or daughters apply for the accelerated programs in both mathematics and language arts next year are certainly welcome to come. And we'll begin that at 7 p.m. in the cafetorium. We did mail invitations and a lengthy explanation letter to all of the current fourth grade families um, earlier in February. And parents who may not be able to come to the meeting tomorrow night but may be listening to this, um, if they are interested in information, they can call Kim Sturgeon in our guidance office. And we need to have information um, that students are, would like to apply for those programs by April 6th. So. Um, we, that is a deadline, and we do hold pretty firm to that deadline. One of the things that we have reviewed at our team leaders meeting last week in light of the incidents that happened nationally um, in California and Pennsylvania last week, sadly, uh, was review of our safety plan and what would we do if we had issues of concern um, in our middle school. And we'll be also talking about that in our staff meeting. From the team leaders meeting, the team leaders have gone out to all of their teams to talk with them about that. Um, our teachers are well versed in our safety plan. It is uh, very visible in their rooms for the adults and for the substitutes so that if we did have to call that into play for any reason, we would know what to do. Um, recently, we have been working on some issues where we've um, called that into play and just to compliment our students that they keep talking to us and they seem to be very excellent judges about what's something that they need to bring to an adult's attention if it involves safety for themselves or for anyone else in the middle school. So I appreciate their cooperation in those efforts. Last evening, as um, the high schools, as our um, middle school students um, mentioned, they a high school hosted the eighth graders and their families to find out about high school courses and all of that excitement. And they are excited about that. As Christine said, you're also a little bit nervous about those. Uh, the recommendations will come home on March 20th with their report cards. We extended the date for the report cards uh, with the two days that we missed last week so that we could have two extra days in our second trimester, especially helping our allied arts courses out uh, to finish up some activities. Um, and we know that they're excited about those. Um, we heard some 
um, good feedback about last night's meeting. And just want to say that we also in the middle school will miss um, Peter. He's been one of those people who has helped our students make that transition to the high school. So we'll be looking for him to put forth his good effort. Um, even though he won't see them in September, we know he'll be part of the plans of what they do from this point forward as they learn more about the high school. And we'll be collecting our stories for Peter's roast as well, too, so we can fully participate <laughs> in that. And I think that completes our, our report for tonight. But if you have any questions, I'd like to answer them. Questions or comments for Nancy? I think we all share your excitement in terms of getting ready for the roast. I mean, it's um, <laughs> it, the news was kind of sad, and now it's kind of we're, now we're focused. I think we've got our energy focused. So. I keep wondering if I'll be able to tell the difference. <laughs> <laughs> you will. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Nancy. Um, we're going to move on to our committee reports. The finance subcommittee uh, met. Uh, earlier this evening. Kevin. Well, actually, we've met several times since the last time I reported to you. We've had two uh, extensive public meetings um, to review the budget, uh, including our all-day Saturday um, job. And um, we are continuing to work with the budget. We've asked the administrators to go back and take another look in view of the uh, the possibility of significant state cuts and also with a view towards keeping the overall uh, rate of increase down in the in the under five percent area so we have asked for the administrators to go back and we will be meeting tonight after this meeting in the in the Jordan conference room to uh, see what we've come up with other than that I think everybody uh, but everybody has been very busy with this budget. Board members, administrators, um, the phones have been buzzing uh, back and forth between here and Augusta. Uh, we met today with Senator Bromley. Um, she had some potential good news for us um, in terms of the cuts. However, until we see an adoption, uh, I'd rather not get into, into that uh, and get everybody excited when there is still an opportunity to be severely disappointed. Um, but we are continuing to work on that. A um, couple of uh, quick notes. Um, we spoke about uh, salary updates. Uh, there have apparently been a couple of long-term illnesses which required long-term substitutes. Energy, as you know, uh, has been more expensive this year and with the winter being what it was, We've actually used an additional 7,500 gallons of fuel, um, but we have signed a new contract, um, uh, which will reduce our electric rates by about 8.5% for about a year. Uh, food service is uh, pretty much status quo. Um, they are still operating in the black, although that's getting a little uh, narrower thanks to uh, salary and benefit increases in those areas. One, one item I would point out, and I know it's going to be reported on a little further um, in this meeting, is one of the ideas that came up in uh, our budget conversations was participation fee for student activities. Um, there has been nothing carved in stone at this point that I'm aware of, but it is an idea that is out there that has been referred to the policy committee. Um, there are a number of people working on it. Um, and it is one of the options. Another option, for example, um, is for the first year, uh, to my knowledge, in many, many years, we are not purchasing a new bus, which would be absolutely abnormal uh, in any other year. But in view of the situations we're confronted with, we are uh, trying to think outside of the box and be as creative as we possibly can with all budgets. That's it. Our next meeting, again, is right after uh, we adjourn the school board meeting tonight. Okay, thank you. Um, a report out from the policy subcommittee. Jennifer. Uh, the policy committee met yesterday, um, and most of what we discussed was the possibility of instituting a participation fee for students who participate in athletics and uh, other co-curricular activities. So we haven't made any decisions. I don't know if you want to talk any more about 
No, I would just characterize it at this point as a task force that has somehow been delegated to the policy subcommittee. Uh, what we've done, or what we've done as a task force of that committee, is to accumulate some information from around the country of schools that uh, do uh, enact uh, participation fees for their students for extracurricular and co-curricular activities. There are a number of different models to follow. Uh, range anywhere from charging a flat participation fee for for a student's participation in any activity throughout the whole year to uh, a, a very specific uh, menu of charges that would be associated with each particular activity. There are a number of different options. Um, what our task force is recommending is that the, the school board look at some of these options and these models uh, and, and consider the viability of using them. Uh, Inevitability, the discussion has inevitably uh, come to a topic of re resource allocation and, and uh, program prioritization. Um, we in no way want to cut programs, but we do understand that several of our programs are non-essential. In other words, they're not required by law and they're not part of our co core academic program. Uh, and it's these programs that uh, tend to be very expensive and uh, so what we want to look at is maybe shifting some of the costs of those programs to the, toward, toward the people that are benefiting from the programs. That's just one option we're looking at. Okay, thank you. And um, an update from the planning committee. Um, Marie. Well, at our last workshop, um, Tom had passed out a list of the proposed representation for that committee for the planning committee. And if anyone has any, you know, additional ideas or comments about that, um, we would like to have this committee put together um, by our next meeting so the school board would be able to approve all of these members. Um, we do, I do have a couple of names um, right now, um, but we still need uh, teachers on this planning committee. Um, particularly, um, I would think, Pine Cove and the high school, since those are the two major areas involved, um, and administrators, um, and anyone can volunteer at any time, <laughs> or give, if any of you guys know of people who want to be on here. Um, and I hope to have it next month, because we really have to get started on this. Okay. Good. Thank you. Um, there is no unfinished business that I know of, um, but we do have new business. And the first is consideration of the superintendent's recommendation to athletic fee positions for the spring of this year. Um, you have in front of you um, the returning, a list of returning coaches at the high school. Um, I would like to read the names of the new coaches, though, um, that are being recommended. Um, in what area? At the high school, Ben Bluen, JV Boys Lacrosse, Sarah Jordan, JV Girls Lacrosse, uh, Stephanie Walsh, Varsity Girls Lacrosse, um, Eric Driscoll, Assistant Tennis, and Ben Putnam in tennis. At the middle school, uh, we have a new coach, uh, Rachel Guthrie, in indoor track, and a list of several re returning coaches. Okay. Um, is there a motion? Jim, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Everybody was looking down at the same time. <laughs> it's never happened before, I don't think. I move that we approve the superintendent's recommendations for uh, spring sport coaching positions as read. Is there a second? Marie, thanks. Um, questions or comments? Seeing none, all those in favor? 7-0. Move on to um, two other items in your packet uh, for an extended baseball trip and an extended lacrosse trip. And it's my understanding these are, have become annual trips for each of these teams and I, are, are to the same areas they have attended in the past, uh, one for the varsity baseball team, but you don't need your permission because it is an out-of-state trip and the other for the boys lacrosse team. Mm -hmm. Is there any reason why we can't take these two together? Anyone have any concerns? Okay, then why don't we have a motion 
um, on both of these trips. Jim. I would move that we uh, approve uh, the proposed extended baseball trip and the proposed extended lacrosse trip for this spring. Second. Susan, thanks. Um, any questions or comments? Seeing none, all those in favor? 7-0. Move on to um, a request for an unpaid leave. And um, we have in front of you um, a request from Joanne Lee for a one-year child-rearing leave uh, for the 2001-2002 school year. And um, Tom, it's yes, for contract. Okay. And so it's your, it's your recommendation that right. this be approved. Um, can I have a motion on the unpaid leave? Jennifer. I, um, <laughs> uh, I move that we uh, how do you phrase approve the <laughs> superintendent's <laughs> recommendation. <laughs> this is why I'm going to, I'm, I'm only going to look this way now. Superintendent's uh, recommendation of a teacher request for an unpaid leave for sure. the 2001-2002 school year. Very good. Thank you. Second? Once I get rolling. Marie, thank you. Um, any questions on this, the terms of this leave? Seeing none, all those in favor? 7-0. Moving now um, on to the job description for high school principal. And this was um, part of uh, an addendum to the packet, I believe that everyone should have received. Um, you have in front of you a proposed uh, position description for the principal at Cape Elizabeth High School. Um, this follows the same format of the most recent job descriptions that have been created, I think the assistant principal positions, um, and also uh, in the budget, the position of facilitator for professional development follows the same kind of a format. It has been discussed at the district leadership uh, council uh, is be being given to you this evening to to review. It would not be it would need to be voted on by the board, but not until your next next meeting. Okay, so essentially a first reading of this right. job description. We're going to move on to consideration of sabbatical leave requests, and is that something you're going to present, Marie? Yeah. Um, this year we've received three requests for sabbatical leaves during the school year 2001-2002. Um, and Tom and I uh, sat through presentations um, from each of Ren Wilkinson, Sarah Lewis, and Andy Stroud, along with the appropriate administrator. Um, we, the uh, sabbaticals that we are recommending for um, all three of these people would um, put us about $5,000 over the cost of sabbaticals that we spent last year in our budget. Um, and I think with, with everything that we talk about with staff development, um, we, you know, we feel good about these. And after listening to each of the three people, they are very excited and I think doing some terrific things. Ren Wilkinson, who is a third grade teacher at Pine Cove and has been with the district for 12 years, is working on developing um, computer applications that will be able to be used in the classroom and the computer lab which will reinforce all of the skills um, that are basically taught in the third grade. He already has um, some programs that, that he is using in the school, but the applications that he wants to work on over the next year have to do with capitalization, homonyms, contractions, roots, prefixes, suffixes, and comma usage. And um, he he talks about these applications that will actually instruct, give examples, um, provide opportunity for guided practice, and test the student's knowledge. And um, the, the impact that it will have um, in the classroom will allow the classroom computer to function as an instructionally valid station during guided reading. And in the computer lab, 
um, the children will be able to directly relate to the concepts that the teachers have just used in the classrooms. And when we talk about um, the, measure, the measure of success for his um, sabbatical, it will be in um, the usefulness to the other teachers at Pine Cove, you know, how well they will be able to use these programs that he's developing. Um, he also talks about, um, and this is where I got lost, um, <laughs> learning different languages, you know, um, uh, the different computer languages, yes, that um, professional um, programmers use. So he's really into this in a big way. And I think it sounds terrific. Um, and then we have Sarah Lewis, who has been with our district for 11 years and um, is also a teacher at, in the second grade in, on the literacy team at Pine Cove. Um, she is pursuing a graduate program at Wheelock, Wheelock uh, College in Boston. And actually, she started this um, in the spring of last year. She was so gung-ho to go back and get her um, graduate degree that she spent her summer commuting on the bus back and forth. Um, she is very excited, and, and her degree will be in uh, teacher of language and literacy. Um, she needs to be at Wheelock on a full-time um, <laughs> basis uh, for literacy labs and clinical experience seminars, which she can't do um, while commuting. She has to be there. Um, it will take her the next school year and probably next summer to complete her graduate degree. Um, and she will be back at school the following year. She um, has already, in conversations with her and Tom Eismeyer, she has already put into practice much of what she's learned over the summer um, to help plan instructive forums for teachers and share the knowledge that she has at different grade levels and faculty meetings. Um, so that's Sarah Lewis. Um, oh, and actually, she hopes uh, this year or next year to do a student assistantship to help pay for the credits that she's taking while she's on sabbatical. Um, the third and final request is from Andy Stroud and he has been with our district for 24 years and is re requesting a sabbatical <coughs> for only the second trimester of the school year next year. Um, he's currently a phys ed teacher at the middle school and um, Andy's focus would be um, to shadow various levels of athletic administration, recreational to professional. He plans to research leadership programs within various school districts and program directors. And he has tentative arrangements with the University of Southern Maine, the Sugarloaf Ski Group, Disneyland, and possibly some of the area's larger high schools. Um, the impact to the classroom and coaching would be to bring an athletic leadership curriculum to the athletes. Uh, he is also working on, or he will be, actually I think he's started, working on a um, coach's handbook. And the framework around his sabbatical is being structured jointly between um, Andy and Nancy Hutton. Um, and I think that's it. Those are the three, and the dollars are listed in, in your report. Very good. Um, the, the way that this process works is um, we've already been advised earlier that there was some intent um, for these folks to um, apply for a sabbatical, and uh, now uh, what, we've ha what we have in our um, package and what we've had a chance to review and as well, the sabbatical committee has had a chance to review are the uh, full plans that you basically just gave a summary of. And um, it's the board's responsibility then to make a determination and provide a decision back to each of these applicants um, prior to, is it April 1st? April 1st. Um, so this does require a motion and a vote and um, I think that it is important that each um, sabbatical request be um, handled individually. So um, that's 
basically the way I'd like to proceed. Um, so, Marie, why don't we ask you to um, make the motions for us in terms of... Okay. Um, if you don't mind. It, it, no, that's fine. <laughs> I know. You don't want me to do it. <laughs> I'm holding a motion you, class you after just the meeting pass it tonight. Down to um, Al Elaine here. <laughs> we'll, we'll she, see if she can redeem this side of the bench tonight. Okay. I, I make a motion that that we approve Ren Wilkinson's um, application for a sabbatical leave for the school year 2001-2002. Okay, as described. Um, second, Susan. Thank you. Any questions about the? Um, the specifics. Seeing none, all those in favor? 7 0. If you could pre uh, present um, the next one. And I make a motion that we um, approve uh, Sarah Lewis's request for a sabbatical leave for the full school year 2001 2002, as described. Okay, thank you. A second, Kevin? Um, questions or comments? And again, the board gets to move through this fairly quickly. We've, we're pretty, pretty well versed on these. Um, seeing, seeing none, all those in favor? 7-0, and we'll have our third motion. Okay. And, and finally, I make a motion that we approve Andy Strout's um, request for sabbatical for one trimester during the school year 2001-2002. Okay. Um, second on that? Elaine, thank you. Uh, questions or comments? Yes. I've got a question. Are these figures right in the full salary? In the um, I, I think that's a question for Tom. I, okay. Actually, I had that same question. Um, the total, the total, the figures on the full salary, staff salary on sabbatical. Um, are those? Are you referring to in one Andy. for Andy Stroud? Under Andy's. Yeah, but it's, that's for the 63 days that he'd be out? Yeah, is that, is that figure correct under the half salary for sabbatical? It just, not that we need to hold this up, but that figure looks a little out of whack. What is it that you suspect has happened there? That well, I, I'm just wondering if our bottom line is really as high as it is because that figure is. I, I, I think the number is probably reversed. It, it should be it, it, the difference with between the full salary and the half salary, that half salary is probably the other end. Like if you subtracted the half salary from the full salary, I think the wrong number is there. Doesn't really add, it doesn't look to be that way. Pauline it, probably could explain it. I'll double check those numbers. Yeah. Okay. I, I mean, it's, it's, I think it's, I know the bottom line, first. the bottom line is right. correct. The bottom line is correct, yes. but that number, if you, it just doesn't make sense, so. Okay. Okay. Um, thanks for finding that discrepancy and we'll, we'll get I that result. I but I can. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay. With that said, um, it, so it will be it will be in line with the the um, the period of time that's that's off. Okay. Um, all those in favor? And that's seven zero. Um, before we conclude our meeting for this evening, and um, and we then begin the. Uh, budget workshop, which immediately follows in the Jordan Conference Room. I do want to um, just remind people of some upcoming meetings. Uh, there is a school board uh, workshop meeting, which is on Tuesday, uh, the 27th of March at 7 p.m. in the high school library. And um, we will be discussing at that time uh, the participation fee that I think was um, uh, addressed by Kevin and as well um, members of the policy committee. Uh, so there will be a, a, a larger discussion, a larger public discussion of that item. Um, and as well, we will also be looking at the calendar 2001-2002. The policy subcommittee meeting will meet again on Wednesday, April 4th um, at noontime in the Jordan Conference Room. The finance subcommittee meeting will meet 
at 6.30 preceding the regular school board meeting that all happens on April 10th, uh, both in the Jordan room for the finance subcommittee and here in the council chambers um, at 7.30 for the regular school board. Um, with that, um, our business for this evening is concluded and certainly all welcome to join us um, for the public forum of our budget workshop, which will, I guess we'll get started. Um, can we do it in 10 minutes, Kevin? We'll get started in 10 minutes. Thank you very much.